Good morning. And welcome to worship. We acknowledge that we are located on the traditional indigenous territory of coast Salish peoples, that we are guests in this land. Let us come and to worship God. The Lord has filled our mouths with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Listen to one another and to decide for us. But today we are not making a decision just to listen. So fasten your seatbelt, folks, and ready for the ride. <laughs> Ruth and her mother in law, Naomi, this is, well, this is the second time I talk about it and the final time. There's so much in the book. If you are inspired, go home and read the whole thing for yourself. They had a touching conversation about life and death before they arrived in Bethlehem. It is time to know what they face. Like I said in the last reflection, we are looking for the action of hasid, the Jewish word for kindness and hospitality. Now it is time for gleaning. That was to collect wheat. It was the time when the harvest was almost done, but there was left over for the poor folks to come in to glean. There were laws to govern such practice. A foreigner, such as Ruth, was most likely not allowed to glean, but the community was still stunned by her kindness toward Naomi. Her story was broadcasted all over the internet. That is how the boss of the wheat field came in, Boaz, the owner of a rich man, uh, the owner of a rich man, that meant he's from a different social class. And he says one of the kindest words in the story. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen. My daughter, do not go to glean in an other field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. What gets our attention is the next scene, the concept of goel comes in. 
Goel, on top, is a Jewish word. The common translation of this word is next of kin, or in our reading, kinsman. It gives us the impression that Boaz is a relative. It could be, but unsure. The role of Goel is multiple and ambiguous. The word can be interpreted as redeemer, a word we use to describe Jesus. It refers to someone who has the right to redeem. The person playing the role of Goel is not necessarily related by blood, but is willing to act as a rescuer for others and help them out of trouble. Goel is someone who can bail you out when you run into trouble. When I was young, it would be my parents. <laughs> it was the men's world who developed a concept like this. Ruth needs to be redeemed, set aside the craziness of ancient men's world. It was an act of kindness for, for Boaz to let Ruth gather wheat in the harvest field. Ruth's encounter with Boaz drew the attention of the mother-in-law, Naomi. During daylight, the threshing floor was the process of loosening the edible part of grain from the straw to which it is attached. It is the step for grain preparation after weeping. At night, that place was comparable to our red light district. Thrusting floor in the Hebrew Bible is an infamous place for encounter between men and women. Now Naomi get an idea. Naomi taught Ruth to go to the harvest field or the freshman floor. And that's what she said, just a reminder. My daughter, da 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 da, he is winnowing partly tonight at the freshman floor. Now wash and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and go down to the freshman floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he was finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies, then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. He said to her, All that you tell me, I will do. So, Ruth looked good, smelled good. <laughs> Why? Going to a hockey game? Biblical scholars tell us the word feet in Jewish term is a euphemism for male sexual organ. But this is the tricky part. It depends on the context. Sometimes feet mean feet. Don't overread. But sometimes feet mean something else. Get that? Good. So what happened here in the freshling floor, the red light district? Contrary to the cultural expectations of the day, Boaz was surprised that Ruth took the initiative. Such a move earned Ruth as one of the uppity women in the Bible. It is not the time to compare moral standards because they aren't comparable. But these two widows were not willing to be controlled by fate, but instead opened their minds to make the future look promising. And the rest is history. Boaz redeemed Ruth. They got married and got a son, and his name was Obed. Read chapter 4. The women of Bethlehem celebrated with them and said the oddest thing ever. What did they say? Then the women of Bethlehem said to Naomi, 
Blessed be the Lord who has not allowed you this day without the next of king, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. There was a lot of surprising move in this story. Remember in the beginning, Ruth was an unlikely companion. Ruth seemed like a burden to Naomi, but kindness won. Pay attention to these women, what they said. Ruth loved you, who was more important than seven sons. You have to say, what? Seven sons, folks, son, not one, seven. It's like winning a lottery and have multiple credit cards, unlimited. But Ruth was better. Think about it. That is odd, very strange perspective to begin with. But in hindsight, unexpectedly, unplanned, it may be true. Naomi most likely couldn't figure out having a foreign daughter-in-law coming along was a good thing. But it ended well. What a surprise. It reinforces in us that we often fail to see the current picture. Not sure cooperation was a good thing. May even question the wisdom of intercultural initiatives. It is not to suggest we shouldn't try our best to plan. But whatever we plan, stay ready for surprises. Naomi got a grandson. His name was Obed. A small ancestry tracing at the end of the book reminds reader Obed was the father of Jesse the father of David. Oh boy, stop there. David, which David? Of course, that's none other than King David. David was someone every ancient Jews adored. It is a big deal. The book of Ruth was written to counter the popular beliefs during the Reconstruction period that foreign wives were not desired. This tiny but lovely book called Ruth reminds the reader that Ruth was an ancestor of David. David, yes, King David, think again. How do you exclude foreign wives? How dare you think the foreign wives brought destruction to Israel? Pure Jewish blood. That is no such thing from the get-go. Have you read Naomi's story? Up to this day when this book is called the Book of Ruth and not the Book of Naomi, it is still stunning. Ruth, a foreigner, a Moabite, a widow, belongs in this country, a Moabite. Can you imagine if Ruth had not been allowed to glean? Can you imagine if Boaz enjoyed a one-night stand and then said no to Ruth? Guess what? That would be no king. David. Now we go out to welcome Ruth. <laughs> Cultural purity may be what they dreamed of, but diversity and inclusion were the lesson of the day. Learn to live with others, foreigners, and people we say we share little commonality. 
is also a lesson God gives us today. So, we set out to look for hassan, kindness. The word appears only a few times in this book. However, the concept covers the entire book. What is powerful about the story is that these characters came from different social positions because of various political and cultural factors. Many obstacles were set up for them, but they were able to break through all of these because of a respect for humanity, a persistence for survival and a break from the cultural restrictions of the day. The Book of Ruth is a powerful story that challenges us to deal with social differences or racial differences and venture out to show kindness. Although it is an ancient work, it offers much food for thought in our effort to build a faithful community of faith today. Amen. Lord be